Let's examine. So let's look. In this lecture, we're going to look at the following example that deals with quantum states or quantum numbers and the Pauli exclusion principle. So basically, we want to determine the quantum states of all the electrons within the neutral nitrogen atom by applying the Pauli exclusion principle. So the first step is to basically ask ourselves, how many electrons do we have within our atom? So because we're dealing with the neutral nitrogen atom, that means the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. So nitrogen means we have seven protons, and that means we have seven electrons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. Now recall that each electron exists in its own quantum state, and the quantum state of the electron is given by a set of four quantum numbers. The principal quantum number n, the orbital quantum number l, the magnetic quantum number ml, and the spin quantum number given by ms. Now, the possibilities for the spin number are always either positive one-half or negative one-half. Now, the amount of magnetic quantum numbers depends on L, and L, the orbital quantum number, depends on the principal quantum number. So basically, by the Pauli exclusion principle, every one of these electrons has its own unique quantum state, meaning its own unique set of four quantum numbers. So that basically means any given orbital or any given subshell has a maximum of two electrons. So that's what the Pauli exclusion principle tells us. So using that information, we want to list all the quantum states of all these seven electrons. So let's begin with electron number one. So electron number one is in the lowest possible energy state and the lowest possible energy level given by n equals one. Now we know if n equals to 1, then L is equal to n minus 1, which is equal to 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0. So L is equal to 0, and this corresponds to the S subshell. Now, the S subshell only has one magnetic quantum number, and that is equal to zero. Remember, the magnetic quantum number is a number or a set of numbers that range between negative L and positive L, and they go through the number zero, because, uh, because L is zero in this case, ML is also equal to zero. Now, we begin, let's say, with negative one-half. So remember, there are two possible spins, either negative one-half or positive one-half. So we begin with negative one-half. Now, by the Pauli exclusion principle, we know that this is a single orbital. This is the S orbital that has a principal quantum number of n equals 1, and we, can, and we can fit one more electron into that orbit. So that basically means all that changes in this row is this becomes a positive 1 half, and this remains a 1, a 0, and a 0. So the quantum quantum state of electron 1 is 1, 0, 0, negative 1 half, and the quantum state of the second electron is 1, 0, 0, positive 1 half. So each one of these quantum states is unique because it's given by its own unique set of four quantum numbers. So they differ by these two spin quantum numbers. Now let's move on to electron 3 and electron 4. The next energy state is given by n equals 2. So, for these two electrons, the n is equal to 2. We know that the L for n is equal to 2 can either be 0 or 1. Because 0 is lower in energy, we simply plug in 0. 
for both cases. And likewise, because the L is zero and L determines ML, ML must also be zero. So let's choose this negative one half and this is positive one half. And once again, this represents the one S and this represents the two S. And by the Pauli exclusion principle, we can fit a maximum of two electrons inside any given orbital. So now we move on to the next electron. So now the 2s is completely filled. The next level in line is n equals 2, l equals 1. Remember, if n is equal to 2, then there are two possibilities for l. So if n is equal to 2, then l can either be 0 or l can be 1. Because we have used up the l equals 0, we're now looking at l equals 1. So this is 2, this is 1. What about our magnetic quantum number? What exactly is the value of this quantity? So because our L is equal to 1 from this equation, we know that our uh, magnetic quantum number begins at negative 1, goes through 0, and ends at positive 1. So let's begin with ML given by negative 1. So now we have to find our spin quantum the number so once again there are two possibilities and we choose the negative one half to be first and once again just like two electrons can go here two electrons can go here two electrons can go into this which is the 2px so so basically here we plug in our 2 because the n hasn't changed, this hasn't changed, this hasn't changed, but this has changed to positive 1 half. And finally we have the seventh and final electron. So this electron has the same quantum number 2. So we have the electron that goes into L equals 1, but the only thing that changed is the orientation of L. And the quantum number that determines the orientation is the magnetic quantum number and let's say this is equal to zero so if this is equal to zero this is a completely new orbit orbital and we can basically once again begin with negative one half so basically we can see by the Pauli exclusion principle every single one of these seven electrons within the neutral nitrogen has its own set of four unique quantum numbers so our seven electrons each have their own unique quantum state that is determined by these four quantum numbers so if we look at these four quantum numbers uh, 